Now, if you look at the kalima of Tawheed, which, is, which we say La ilaha illallah, that there's no deity worthy of worship. The ruh, the essence, the soul of that is to single out the Rabb, the Lord, the creator, the owner, the one who controls all affairs, the one who dictates all affairs, the one who's in charge of all affairs, the one who plans all affairs, the one who provides for sustainers. It's to single him out when it comes to the love, when it comes to the respect, the honoring, when it comes to the fear, when it comes to the hope, right? And these things then lead to trusting in him, depending in him, repenting to him, longing for him, you know, having fear of him and not to love anybody other than him, except that love of someone else leads to the love of Allah or leads in increasing the love of Allah and so on and so forth, right? So that's the whole essence of it right that one only uh, repents to him the one you know makes obedience to him the priority the one obeys him completely and in all situations right the one seeks his help first and foremost and does not seek help in idols or the dead and so on and so forth and does not prostrate to somebody else and does not sacrifice for somebody else and so on and so forth and that is the essence of tawhid and to give its full haq full rights right as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in quran praising the people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-ma'arij hum bi shahadatihim qa'imun and these are the people that upon their testimonies they are firmly standing Right? So this is giving the haq, the right of the shahada. Now for the people who do that, they are the one who will taste a goodly life in this dunya as well as in the hereafter. Right, So their paradise of this dunya is the sweetness and beauty of worship. They enjoy the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They actually enjoy fasting, praying, doing things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't take it as a physical burden. They're actually enjoying it. And then in the hereafter, they are blessed with the Jannah and the goodly life in the Jannah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَ وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَلَنُحِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Whoever does good deeds, whether it be a male or a female, and he's a believer, Allah will give him a goodly life. Allah will definitely give him a goodly life. So the one who is not feeling that sweetness, the one who is not enjoying that sweetness, now they're in one of these two situations. One is they, they may have some of these indicators, something calling them from inside, from the soul, and showing them that there's some sort of emptiness in their life, and they can feel something is missing their heart, their fitra is giving them signal. But now what would happen is either they don't have the knowledge of how to pursue the creator or they don't have the courage and the tawfiq and the facilitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or the other type of people are the ones who are busy and drowning in the love of dunya and what the dunya has. So they may be busy chasing and enjoying fame, wealth, men or women and so on. Similar to someone who is fully intoxicated that he may see his home, his car burning down, but would not be aware of the loss because he's intoxicated. So even if he's missing out, he does not realize that loss until he wakes up, until he sobers. And for some people, this awakening, this sobering happens at a very late time when nothing can be done. And that is at a time when they are facing death. <laughs> Da 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 da